Servus Mena, it's Red Pill Germany again. In my last videos I reported about legal changes in Germany and our elites and our establishment, they are saying that this is necessary in order to protect the population and this is how this law is also called a law for the protection of the population from a pandemic of national proportions. The other side, the critics of these legal changes, they are saying that this is state overreach. They are infringing on our rights. They are violating the liberties and the civil rights that our constitution normally grants by going around the constitution by declaring a state of emergency or a pandemic case or something like that. So today I think it is time to look at the actual numbers in Germany. The official numbers, mind you, no alternative facts here, but official German state figures. Is this really a dramatic pandemic that we're having? So I want to present to you the numbers and put it into perspective and explain a little bit what we're actually seeing here. Because one strategy of our elites that I have noticed is that they misrepresent the numbers, they don't explain it in the right way, they don't give the right context and they scare people with large numbers. Ooh, 20,000 new infections, 20,000 new cases, scary, dangerous. Danger. The problem is that most people have difficulties putting these numbers into perspective or comparing them in a meaningful comparison with other diseases or what that means for a population of over 80 million like we have it here in Germany. So what is the first thing that we have to bear in mind? The first thing in my opinion is that in 2019 alone 940,000 people died in Germany. That is roughly 2.5 thousand every day. So it is very easy to see that the 9,000 people that died with or from the China bug in spring earlier this year, well, they were 9,000 people. That is only a little tiny bump on top of the background mortality signal for this year so far. But that is not the number they used to scare people. The number they used to scare people with is, of course, the positive test number. Yeah, look at this curve. Yeah, the March-April signal was small and now we have this huge second wave. Scary. The truth is that this is only a positive test number. So we must look at the sampling rate. And as I was saying during summer all the time, you see these discontinuities in summer on this noisy background signal there. And that is when the number of tests that were conducted every week was increased. So look at this. This is official data from the Robert Koch Institute from the German state. You have below 400,000 tests a week in the early stages this year and now we are at over 1.5 million tests every week. So that is almost a factor of four. And what do we see now? Around 5,000 positive tests each day in March and around 20,000 positive tests each day now in October, November. Hmm, a factor of four. Isn't that curious? Yeah, if you sample four times as much in a population that has a comparable degree of infections, guess what? You get four times the positive test results. So this already leads us to the hypothesis that the situation right now is very comparable, not worse, but very similar to March and April as far as the spread of the infection goes among the German population. What are some other indicators? That would be hospital beds. And here you can see the number of China bug patients that we have at the moment is almost as high or actually a little higher but it is approximately on the same level as it was in spring. Another very important indicator, another very important number that I always talked about is the ratio of positive tests to overall tests conducted. When the number of tests you do each week changes drastically, as was the case in Germany, the overall number doesn't bear any information or actually a convoluted information. The meaningful information actually is carried by the ratio of positive tests. And you see, this is again at a very comparable level to the spring, around 8%. In summer, as I told you, this ratio dropped below 1%. 
and only because they progressively ramped up the number of tests each week they could scare the people with increasing overall positive result numbers. And this was necessary in order to keep the tension on the population, to keep the pressure up and to make sure that this topic, this trend will not be forgotten and replaced by another trend in the news cycle. But this China bug topic stays on the top of the news priority list, so to speak, at all times during 2020. And if you want to let's say engineer some radical changes in society you cannot afford that people forget about this or think it's kind of over you make sure that it remains headline news throughout the year and that you can restrict the population and enforce restrictive measures at all times they did it even in summer I reported to you they even banned or tried to ban political demonstrations in August when there was nothing there at all And now let's go to the next important topic. This lockdown light, this partial lockdown, has it any effect? The politicians are saying now, of course, oh, look, we flattened the curve because of the lockdown. See, the lockdown works. But that is utter nonsense. And I will tell you exactly why. There is one simple argument for that. But it is a very, very safe argument. And that is incubation time. Look at this curve here. Yes, we have a characteristic pulse shape of this signal, as is very usual for a lot of seasonal infections such as colds or flus. And there is this steep flank that is always confused by lay people with an exponential growth, which it definitely is not. It is not a single exponential, as I explained in my videos in great detail. And then it saturates and it peaks and the infection rate drops down again. The integral signal follows an error function or a logistic function then. But when did this flattening of the curve occur? When did we go from a steep flank, which means an increasing infection rate, to a stabilizing linear, to a saturating signal, which means the rate is decreasing again? We have not an accelerated, but a decelerated system now. That occurred at around the time when in Germany we were still discussing about this second lockdown or actually I should say the chancellor was discussing with the governors of the states. Germans were only discussing without any effect among each other but the people who actually decided that were just the governors and the chancellor so the executive they were talking about it but the lockdown has not been implemented yet and it goes even further remember I reported that the weekend before the lockdown took effect people were partying like crazy people were meeting all their relatives They were visiting their friends because they wanted to make sure that this last weekend, that also had pretty nice weather in many parts of Germany actually, that they can do what they will no longer be able to do throughout November and maybe and very surely actually for much longer to come. So if this positive test signal, as I would call it, had anything to do with how much partying people do or how many of their friends they meet, then there should have been somewhat of a spike, but it isn't. It is flattening. It seems like that the progression of this signal has very little to do with how we respond and how many meters of distance we keep and if we have a little piece of cotton in front of our mouths. Now don't get me wrong, I do think that these measures have some kind of an effect but it is very minor and this is what the data actually tells us. All these measures should have had a pronounced effect that was visible one week after they were decided, after they took effect, but you see nothing. It follows this characteristic bell curved pulse shape and uh, the lockdown is not even in any way modulated on the signal. And if you want to argue that this is not a characteristic progression curve of a disease, but instead it is the lockdown that is showing its effect. So first we have the steep flank and then the flattening is because of our measures. Well, then you're just wrong because there is a timing gap. There is latency. And as I said, this flattening, if you want to call it that way, I wouldn't, but if you want to, it occurs before or during the time when the lockdown was decided, not one week afterwards, like you would expect then. 
So to sum up, I think from a quantitative point of view, the situation in Germany right now is very similar to earlier this year in March and April. It is not worse. You can see that when you look at the hospital beds, at the people, at the patients with symptoms and at the deaths. You see that this is all very comparable. All that is different is that we have four times as many tests and four times as many positive tests. Because I think, and this goes well together with the other observations that I just talked about, if you sample four times as much in a population that has a very similar level of infection, you get four times the result. Surprise! And speaking about time lags, here you see the new cases versus the new recoveries and you see of course the recoveries lag behind for one or two weeks I think it is the new cases which makes sense first you must get sick or you must get tested positive before you can recover and just look how these traces look like in March and April and how they look so far in October November we are now at the crossing point where the recovery catches up in magnitude with the new cases the new cases is flattening already and the recoveries curve is still going steep and there is a crossing point and this is where we are right now so I cannot look into the future I don't have a crystal ball this bears no predictive power whatsoever but just from comparing these curves, I mean, it looks like it is similar in shape, similar in dynamic, and uh, probably we are past the hilltop, so to speak, right now. And from now on, we are on the descent again. It seems like, unless something disruptive happens now, that this wave is basically over now. I wouldn't be surprised if the number of new infections or let's say positive tests will decline from now on and we see the second part, the declining trailing edge of this pulse shape here. Okay, that was it from my side with my little report from Germany. I want to thank all my supporters and my subscribers. Like, share and subscribe if you enjoy these presentations or find them interesting. If you want to support my work, you can do so directly via PayPal or via Patreon or Subscribestar. Servus, Kameraden!